Harrison would like to say a few words to you about empowerment. This is his second time competing at the show. He would like to recognize and dedicate this to his uncle, Rosario Milardo. Please welcome to the stage, Sal Scatino. I never thought I'd give a speech in trunks and a tea and a tank top, but this is amazing. Um, guys, how would you start today's next couple questions? Who here feels as if you have capabilities but you do not know how to utilize them? Yeah? Who here feels as if you, you know your potential but you settle for less? Anyone? Yeah, absolutely. It's because of our belief system. It's the things we tell ourselves. Right? My name is Sal Scatino. Uh, I'm a psychotherapist. I most of you know me, Sal Scatino, as the son of Sal Scatino, owner of Scatino's Italian Market, best authentic food in Baltimore. I promise you, and I assure you, go there, visit there. It's amazing, right? So, the reason I'm up here today is because of my story. About five years ago, I was stabbed in the city of Baltimore. I was stabbed in the heart, the liver, and the lungs. Right? And that made me question my beliefs. All of my beliefs about people and places and myself and my environment was completely turned upside down. So I had to revitalize it all. I had to look at it through a different lens. During my recovery, I had a choice between two different paths. It was take the victim mentality and belief system or conform to a belief of being a survivor. Now the victim one, that was the easy one. I could just kind of regress into anger and frustration for people, places, things, and avoid confronting those feelings and those hard thoughts. Or I could take that survivor mindset, and I could believe that I was more capable than what my story was telling me. That I had to be just the product of something terrible that happened to me. Or I could look at it and I could take it as a string, and I could move on from it. Right? How we make a belief is through a two-fold system. This is how we collaborate with our mind. And that is one, vision, your visual cues. How do you see yourself? And two, your language, your self-talk, the things you say to yourself. Once you pair these two, that's how you create a belief. And then it's embedded into your belief system, and that is how you see the world. Whatever we believe, is where our frame of focus is going to navigate towards. Right? We're not what we want, we are what we believe. That's what it always is going to come down to. Now with that two-way system, the people who take that, they utilize it, and they allow it to break open that unlimitedness of themselves, are people like Muhammad Ali. Right? At the age of 10 years old, he would walk around his neighborhood saying, I am the greatest, that I will be the greatest. Therefore, in his life, when he was met with discrimination, protest, argument, he always fell back on that belief, because that's what we're going to do. That's the thing that's going to fuel us. That's the thing that's going to allow us to not just conform what other people tell us we should be, or what we should do. Right? Our beliefs, they change our shoulds. I should go to the gym. I should eat healthy. To our must, that I have to do this. Because this is a part of who I am. Right? Roger Bannister. Anyone familiar with Roger Bannister? Yes. The first man to break the four minute mile. Now before him, common belief said that it was biologically, medically impossible to beat the four minute mile. That our human bodies were not capable to push to such limits. But those were not his standards, those were theirs. Now what he would do, he would envision himself crossing the finish line at three minutes and 59 seconds. And then he would pair that with, I can do this. No matter what other people say, this is a belief of mine. This is something that I hold true to my values and my morals. Therefore, I will stand up and say, this is not right from what they say. This is not my truth. You know, during my recovery, I found myself in a doctor's office, obviously. I was in a cardiologist's office, and I was told that I'd be able to do limited to moderate exercise. <laughs> See, those were their beliefs. Those were their standards, not mine. Now, the beliefs that people put on you, they don't have to be yours. It's not an imprisonment. These are just words, loose words, 
that people say because they feel insecure about themselves. Right? But we can be more if you believe more. Now the way to take this and we implement it into life to allow us to aspire to our dreams and our goals and be more than we could ever imagine is by one, our vision. Right? Our vision as to what we want to be and who we want to be and how we want to do it. Be very wildly, unbelievably specific about that. Right? And then once you have that, look at the people you surround yourself with. Right? Some, people will make you, or some people will make you feel small and insignificant. Make you feel as if you don't have worth. That you don't mean anything. And those are the people that we need to identify in our lives. And be able to discard them. No matter how long you've known them, you've got to push them aside. Because the people around you, this is where we develop our sense of self and our identity. How do you want to measure your identity? Of the people that make you feel small, or the people that empower you? Allow you to believe that you can be more capable than your thoughts are telling you. Next, next, our next step in terms of how we instill our beliefs into our life and into our goals is self-mastery. Right? The ability to identify those self-limiting beliefs. The beliefs that tell you you can't do something, that you're not worth anything. They're self-deprecating, they're self-loathing, and they hold you back. We've got to know what they look like, know what they sound like. So when they come up, we can expect them, we can be ready for them. And then we can challenge them, and we can replace them. We can replace them with new, beneficial, adaptable, empowering beliefs that will push you beyond your limitations. Right? Our limitations are not always true. There's things that we create and we make up in our mind. Now the last and final step is action. It's action with an optimistic mindset. This is how we put things into practice, right? Beliefs, they feel funny in the beginning when you start to change them. When you're trying to transition from those self-limiting, self-deprecating beliefs, self-hindering beliefs, to those self-empowering, motivational, rational beliefs, right? We have to do that with that optimistic mind. What that will do is allow you to cultivate an abundance mindset. An abundance mindset, what it allows you to do is it allows you to divorce your limitations of self and marry your unlimited capability of greatness. The thing about greatness, right? People think it's some esoteric, elusive thing that you're born with. It's in your genetic code. But I call BS on that. Every day of the week I will call BS on that. Right? It is something that we tell ourselves that we can or cannot do. Henry Ford says, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both right. Right? It's what we tell ourselves on a daily basis. It's what we allow ourselves to see ourselves to be. And then there's people we surround ourselves with. Now how I'd like to leave for today is, now I, I want you to remember me. I want you to remember this, this highlighter color, these pink trunks, and the voice and the words that I'm instilling in into years today, not because I'm some sort of special person, but I want you, I wish I want me to be your reminder that you can be more than the thoughts, that you can be more than the words that people spray at you, that it is with your power to challenge these things and to replace them with something more empowering, something more motivating. Be the change that you want to see in yourself, be the role model that you want to work aspire to be. And you can do that each and every day with consistency and practice. And once you put that practice in every day, it'll become second nature and you'll be great every single day. Now I want to thank you guys so much for your time. I want to thank you guys all for coming out. You guys are what lift us up. You will give us that empowerment as you guys sitting in those stands. So thank you so much. Thank you for my family for coming. Thank you for my mentor for being here.